This is Peter Walker at Photokina and I'm looking around and I'm going to be filming with my Follow Motion 1 camera, uh, well, uh, Follow Motion 1 gimbal and uh, UI camera. Now, I've just been looking at competition for that, the Oslo Mobile, and I was not impressed. I was not impressed. It was, if I moved it to the side like this, it would like collapse to the side, it would, you know, whereas it would not stay straight. And uh, to be honest, uh, okay, I only tested it for five minutes, but in those five minutes, I found so many issues that uh, you know I was sorry. It was it's cheap, one hundred and fifty dollars, but um, to be honest, not worth it. And DJI, a big company. Yeah, well, three X is very different. Oh, this one, yeah, only thirty nine dollars. Thirty nine dollars. Yes. Okay. So I think you this one at least one hundred fifty dollars. More. Yeah, more. More, more. Yeah. This is more like two fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's very different. But so, but when is one axis enough? I mean, I uh, for you. Yeah, when? Well, you know, I sell gadgets, so you know, I'm just wondering if this is something worth selling. Um, when? I don't understand why one axis would be enough. It's, it only handles one direction. Yeah, one direction. It's not enough for you running and looking. Yeah, but you yeah, know, yeah. I don't. It doesn't yeah. need to be for me. I, I sell things, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it needs to be for the, the customer. Has to see a, a need for it. Where, where does that help the customer? It's very, because you when you compare to the single X and the three X, very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. It's very difficult. Yeah, you've only got one access. Yes. So yeah. this one is uh, better for selfie video and stuff. Like yeah. Yeah, because you you can only go in for one side. Right. So this side, other side. <laughs> so, but this one you you mostly like putting the. Any, everywhere when you're working when you're yeah. running that's right yeah this will work anyway but, yeah. but this one is more for professional yeah yeah but this one is just for everybody for everybody yeah for everybody this uh, one. okay yeah and this I one is very portable very small well, you can just carry them is that can, can you program that also much so this is Oh, and this is a Syria three K. Three, three came professional points of stay by. Let's see if we can get the sign. Uh, very interesting trade fair so far. I've managed to get through halls uh, three, two, and one nearly completely through, uh, where you found a lot of the major uh, camera manufacturers like Nikon, Panasonic, uh, uh, Olympus, uh, Ricoh and, and all the others, as well as quite a lot of small companies uh, offering things like gimbals and stuff, which uh, is very good because I've, I'm looking at gimbals and uh, I've, in fact, I'm filming this on a gimbal of the Flow Motion 1. And, um, uh, I found it a very interesting show. Uh, I arrived a bit late, so I didn't see as much as I'd hoped to on the first day, but it doesn't matter. I've got at least two more days of this show, and uh, it was quite full. It was a lot fuller than that, than, I'm, than it normally is on the first day. And uh, that is a, a good thing. That shows that the photography market is in fact, uh, I found a lot more interesting things here at uh, Photokina than I did at the Seabit trade fair, which I also go to every year. And uh, photography seems to be very much alive, and lot, uh, lots of stuff, I say lots of small things like uh, gimbals, 
tri uh, tripods, uh, accessories, uh, and stuff like that, which I've, I've been seeing, which, are really, which is good because I'm in the process of setting up a, a uh, online shop for gadgets. So I'm obviously scouting for products. Uh, now, uh, I'm not going to talk about the individual products I saw yet because uh, I'll do that in a later video. It's well worth coming and um, again, like Seabit, it has kind of got smaller. Like there are only about four or five halls, or well, maybe six, I don't know, I have to, I have to look on the plan. Um, not all the halls as it used to be many years ago. And um, but they're packing it in There's, uh, here. At least the full the halls which are used are very full and very well used. And uh, I found it a very interesting day. Certainly, the most memorable thing of today. I I sat down with one of these Chinese manufacturers talking about my upcoming online shop, GadgetHeaven.net and talking about the way we can uh, uh, sell uh, the products and about pricing and things like that and uh, she was very interested and and could, gave me a few tips and tricks from, from what she was saying and uh, telling me that they also uh, have stores in in Europe where I could uh, get the products faster or, and also in the USA so I might be working with them um, other things I saw um, very unusual stuff, like uh, I saw a, a, a stand for mobile phones, you know, like a little tripod, which is full of suction cups. So you just basically uh, use the suction cups to hold your phone and then and you, and use it like that. It, it looked weird, to be honest. I, I didn't want to get I didn't want it. But um, it, it's kind of strange. Gimbals are all the rage at Photokina. Uh, in fact, I'm using one to film this, the Flow Motion One, who are not at Photokino, unfortunately. But there are plenty of other companies, and uh, most of them are in Hall 2.1, 2.2, and in Hall 5. We're in Hall 2.1 right now, and we're going to have a fleeting look at uh, what's on offer. We're starting with the company behind me, which is the Wifing, W-E-I-F-E-N-G group and we'll see what we can find. Pull down, it pushes up. So, okay. Um, it seems to do the job. So, they have a range of these things. And Pretty nondescript, really. They do have a little tripod, which is something that the um, slow motion is exciting to say. I'll see if I can. It's the WI310. So, here they have an impressive large gimbal. Look at this a gimbal. Um, I bet this costs a pretty penny. But this is the kind of gimbal which is quite unusual. And uh, we'll forget. Where's the, the other one? Is it? And here's another one. On the. So, one of the uh, large manufacturers of gimbals is the company behind me. Now, I can't pronounce the name. But we're going to have a look at some of those gimbals afterwards. Uh, we see now these are massive gimbals uh, used for 
speaker, you know, um, SLR cameras, and obviously, and this is Can you explain this, this for me? Yeah. We have a dedicated app for this video. Right, okay. So after downloading the app and connecting the, the app with the gimbal, you can control various camera settings <laughs> on the key panel here. Right. You can use this control wheel to control the focus and zoom of your camera. Oh, you can see in front of the focus, yeah, so yeah. that's quite impressive, yeah. yeah. And also you can control the record button. So yeah. You can take pictures of photos here. Okay, so you can do everything on the game yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. That's actually quite impressive, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, the, 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 this game goes, like all the game goes, basically all the game goes. Right. And the game goes, we are using the game goes. That yeah. means the game goes. The game goes means the game goes. Okay, so follow me, follow me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like on the right. Okay. And if you want to go into the locker room, you can use the game goes. Well, oh yeah, yeah, okay. So you have a switch. Yes, okay, yes. it goes down to the... Yeah, and now the back of the gimbal is very easy. Holding the cockpit trigger, you enter the spot mode. Oh, this is very high. Okay, right. Especially if I have to capture some spots. Okay, so you can quickly move the direction. Yes, yes, yes. And now here, you can enter it. <laughs> Indeed, so it moves slowly towards <laughs> smoothly. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Very, very impressive, actually. One of the one of the best criminals I've seen for the game so far. And I'm lucky at quite a lot of stands. And uh, but it, it, how much is that? One thirty nine dollars. That's actually impressive. You have it. You have it in black or white. Now, uh, can this extend? Can the you have you know, like a pole? Right. Okay. Okay. Now it's quite big. Um, look. Actually, we also have considered that. That's why we made it quite easy to hold up. Yeah. Okay. Right, so right. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Now, how heavy can the phone be? What's the maximum weight? Uh, like a 210 grams. 210 grams, that's pretty normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you've got a lot of controls on here. It's quite big. How long does the battery hold? Uh, around 12 to 14 hours. Well, that's pretty long. Is the battery exchangeable? No, no. It's built in its battery. And it has a USB C connector. Can you charge the phone while you're using it? Yeah, I think so. You charge the phone, maybe put it in the battery. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, fine. Oh, well, that is, that's. It's certainly the most impressive looking one I've seen so far. Do you have a brochure I can take with me? Okay. And, and the price, my gosh. Look at that price. 
camera stabiliser for all cranes. So this is the Smooth 4. Yeah, we also have the newest model for the mirrorless cameras. Yeah, uh, that's for larger cameras, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a similar yeah, price? Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. so yeah, I've seen quite a few. You got, I've seen worse for more money. So that's pretty good. How heavy is it? This one? Yeah. I think it's around uh, two, two, three hundred gram. I think two, two, three hundred. Yeah, yeah. It's not heavy. It's not heavy. Yeah. yeah. You're right. It isn't heavy. So yeah, this is. And I already th I thought I already had the best one, but maybe I don't. I'm not sure. Yeah, which one did you get? I have the flow motion one. Ah, oh, this one. You heard of it? Yeah, no, I have. Sorry, I have seen it before, but I've never tried it. And it has the nice uh, oh, carbon. Yeah, yeah. 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 It must be expensive. Right? Yeah, it's more. It's more than it's like yeah. two hundred or something. Oh, okay. yeah. But it's it's nice because you can like put yeah, the tire like, yeah, yeah, or yeah. low down. Yeah. So that's, that's really nice. Can you fold it a shorter? Oh, you shorter? Well, let me just switch this off for yeah. a second. Ah, uh, I see. And it uh, still works. Yes, yes, yes. And it will still work yes. like that. Like the removal hat. Yeah. yeah, it still works. Yeah. It doesn't get shorter than that, yeah? yeah. <laughs> so, yeah? Because the battery electronics are in here. So yes, so far I've liked this the best, but yours looks pretty good, and your price is unbelievable. Huh? So I'll look out for that. Your, you, are there, this is already on sale. Of course, this one is on sale. It's on sale for almost one and a half year. One and a half year. So the software is pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. especially for iOS. Yeah. Android also works okay, but yeah. not as perfect as on iOS. But iOS, so it works yeah. better on better on iOS. Yes. yes. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, that looks good. I will look at the brochure and uh, sort that out. Okay. So later we will have a workshop here. We will introduce all the products. Ah, okay. The When's the users. workshop? No, maybe in, in two minutes. I think. In two minutes. Okay, maybe I can catch that. Hello, Fotokina. I hope you're all well. What a lovely Thursday it is today, and I hope you're all having an awesome time. What a great event Fotokina is. There's so much going on in such a small place. It's crazy. Um, so I'm going to do a workshop. Um, any of you that are interested in gimbals, come and hang about. We've got so much going on over at the booth today. So if any of you want to learn how to get really, really good shots with gimbals and really cheap equipment, you can also use expensive equipment on the gimbals, but I like to keep mine nice and cheap. Um, so if any of you are interested, gather round because we're going to take you through a nice workshop on how to use these gimbals. And I'm also going to give you a few tips and tricks on how to travel with the gimbals because I like to do a lot of traveling and uh, go different places around the world and capture my content. So a little bit about me, my name's James, I'm a filmmaker from the UK. I do lots of commercial filmmaking work, I do lots of promotional videos, a lot in sport and a lot in travel. So I'm always using gimbals for my shoots, whether it be a travel video, whether it be a commercial shoot, whether it be sports shoots. And um, there's loads of different kind of gimbals for different situations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a small video that I've done for a travel company in Morocco. Um, I actually shot this in the Sahara Desert. Um, and you're going to see a lot of shots that are actually shot with this Zion Crane Plus here, this camera, this lens, and also this lens. So the scene I'm about to show you is only shot on literally what you see here and a drone. So everyone wants a drone when you go to the Sahara Desert, let's be honest, I couldn't not take one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the video and then I'm gonna break down how I've done all of these different shots. So I hope you enjoy it. And uh, this is my film from the Sahara Desert. Hope you enjoy it.
Cheers. Thanks, mate. So yeah, that was um, two hours of me shooting in the Sahara Desert. Um, as you can see, there's a couple of drone shots in there, but literally everything else that I shot was shot on this Sony A7S Mark II. That's why it's in a really bad state. It looks like it's just come out of World War II um, and it's not looking good. Um, I've also got a Canon 10 to 18 lens on here, so a really cheap lens, and also your Nifty 50. That's a Canon 50mm 1.8 STM lens. Super, super cheap. I mean, this whole setup literally will cost you less than about two and a half grand now. Day. so that is super super cheap um, and also for me when you're shooting in locations like the Sahara or any environment that is really harsh on conditions you need equipment that is super quick easy to set up and also deals very very well with the environment and the conditions so when we turned up to the Sahara we literally had two hours before the Sun set so we had to be very quick on our feet and we had to absolutely smash it before the Sun went down and we lost all the light so using the Zion Crane Plus, it's so super quick, easy to set up. I know my crane inside out because I've kind of personalized it for me. So as soon as I turn up, I can whip it straight on the quick release plate and I'm ready to rock and roll, already pre-balanced. So that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love the gimbals nowadays. We're so lucky to have equipment that is super quick, easy to set up, and it gets incredible, incredible footage. So what I'd quite like to do is break down some of these shots and show you how you can use some of these techniques in some of your films with really super simple camera movements. Because these gimbals are so easy to use, it's easy for you to recreate shots like this. Okay, so I'm gonna break down some of these shots. So the first shot that we're gonna go into is a dolly tracking shot, I think, if I'm correct. Yes, so does anyone know what a dolly tracking shot is? Come on, someone must know what a dolly tracking shot is. Yeah. My man, yeah, that's a, yeah, so like a forward and back. But a dolly tracking shot is actually where you go left to right. So for example, the camera will be in one position and it will actually move over to the left or over to the right. And with these gimbals, they're super, super, super easy to do. Josh, if you want to give a little example on how to do a dolly tracking shot. So for example, if I was to walk in this direction, Josh would literally just walk next to me this way and the camera stays on that axis but moves left to right so let me break down one of these shots for you so as you can see here i'm literally just bringing the camera over to the right and i like to use foreground in my image so if you have a little bit of a look on the left hand side I use this foreground, as I move to the right, that pushes out of the way, and then we use it as a reveal. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm using the, the June as my foreground, and as I dolly track over to the right, I'm revealing what's in the background. Now for me, it's a really good storytelling technique because you've got almost two shots in one. So at the start, we've got the shot of the June, and then after that, we reveal our second scene. So for me, there's one shot. We're not giving much away about the scene. We don't know much about the story. We just kind of see this out of focus tune in the foreground. So maybe we're getting ideas that we're in a desert somewhere like that. And then as we dolly track over to the right, that is when we reveal the second part of our story. And we're, we're essentially exposing what our shot, what our story is gonna be about. So after the dolly tracking shot, let's, let's pick apart the next shot, a boom shot. Does anyone know what a boom shot is? A booming shot? A booming shot? No? Okay. So a booming shot is where the camera either booms up or booms down. Now the camera will stay in the exact same position and it will either lift up or it will lift down. So you can boom up or boom down. So let me give you an example of a booming shot. This is one of the most simple shots you can do. So as you can see, the camera starts low to the ground, and as we lift up, watch how the background comes into the frame. For me, that's one of the reasons why I love a booming shot, because the background really exposes itself, and the foreground pushes out of the way, and we see what's in the background. Now these are super, super easy shots to do. You literally get one of these nibbles and you can do it with ease. It's literally just a case of lifting it up, because they do the stabilization for you. So Josh, if we have a little bit of an example here, if I was walking along and as we were tracking at the same time, we was just to boom up, 
It's as simple as that. The gimbals are so easy to use. And uh, the booming shot is actually one of my favorite shots. So on to the next. Right, so this film I'm gonna show you now was shot in a place called Jaipur in India. Um, and I actually used the Crane 2 for this one. So this film was shot in the Crane 2. And if you have a little bit of a look, in this film, there's a lot of tight close-up shots of faces of people. And I wanted really good solid motors that could work in a fast situation so I could pan very, very effectively to keep on people's faces. So I'll let you have a little bit of a watch of this film and uh, then I'll pick apart the shots again. So that was my film that I shot in India with a Zion Crane 2. Um, to be honest, shooting in India was a bit chaotic. There's so much going on in India. I'm sure if any of you guys have been, it is absolutely crazy out there. I love it, it's beautiful. Such a beautiful country. And to be able to work in an environment like that, I'm constantly on my feet, getting in and out of tuk-tuks, in and out of cars, taxis, and you have to be ready to go when the shot arises. When you see that shot, you need to be ready, capture it, and then go. So for me to have a gimbal that is so rugged, I could literally put this down on the floor, pick it up, put it in a bag, stick it in a taxi, and it is so rugged and durable, I didn't have to worry whatsoever about the gear breaking. That just allowed me to think more about the shot and more about the creation that I'm trying to tell instead of the gear. Because the last thing you want to be thinking about is, is my equipment all right? Am I damaging anything? But if you're there in the moment, you want to be thinking about the shot. You don't want to be thinking about the gear. So for me, that's why there's the Zion Crane two was my favorite gimbal for this shoot because you basically just go out there and i didn't have to worry i was on and off of motorbikes everything and it didn't break um, and also with this the motors are so nice and strong it's really easy to really customize the dampenings the pans the follows to the point where i could sit in a tuk-tuk and as people were coming along i could just about capture them really nice and tight on their faces so for me that's one of the reasons why i absolutely love the zion grade two so if we break down a few more shots from this film, I will show you a tracking shot. The most simple shot that you can do with a gimbal. Does anyone know what a tracking shot is? I'm sure some of you know what a tracking shot is. Okay, so a tracking shot, my man over here does. So a tracking shot is essentially when you follow a subject. So for example, if a subject was walking from point A to point B, the camera would literally track with them wherever they go. So Josh, if we have a little bit of an example, you can use the Crane 2 over there, that's right. So a tracking shot, super, super simple. If Josh was to track me, essentially, he would be following me as I go. So if you come down here, Josh, and I'll literally just walk this way. So Josh, the camera would track towards me. Now that, that is the most simple thing that you can do with a gimbal. But it's really effective because for me, when the camera is following a subject, it's almost like we're following that subject and their journey. So we feel as the viewer like we're coming along with them on wherever they're going. So let me show you an example of a tracking shot. As you can see here, we're literally just following the subjects. These kids are amazing. And also this woman here in Vietnam, um, as you can see, literally, we're just walking with them. Super simple, super easy, but really effective for storytelling. So, a pull-in, a push-in, or a pull-out shot? Does anyone know what a push-in or a pull-out shot is? No? Okay. Yeah, see, yeah, my man knows again. We need you as a demonstration. Here we go. So a push-in or a pull-out shot. Here we go. Let's see it. Pushing in, very, very nice, and pulling out. 
my man over here, give him a round of applause. Unbelievable. Well done, mate. Cheers. So a push-in shot is essentially where you would push into a scene or pull out of a scene. Now for me, I like to use foreground again in these kind of shots because if I get Josh standing over here, if I was to push in past Josh, here, Josh is the main foreground of the shot. So mainly we know a lot about Josh. But if the camera was to push past through Josh, now the scene in front of him is now the representation of the shot. So we're seeing a lot about Josh, and as we push through past Josh, we're revealing Josh's environment. We instantly know more about Josh because we know where he is, right? So I'm gonna give you an example of a pushing shot. So here we're pushing past this guy on the right, and we push through this window, and instantly we reveal where we are. This for me, in my film, was like the opener of my India film, because I wanted to express where we were. I wanted to show the kind of people that were there and the environment. For me, pushing through is a really, really nice way to establish a scene. For me, I love to push in or pull out to establish scenes. So the next kind of shot is another push-in shot. So if I can tell a story in one shot, I feel like I've got that shot down to a T. So for me, this is one of my favorite shots that I've ever got because I feel like I've told a story for me in one shot. If you see the way that we've framed this here, we've got this mother figure, right? So we've got this mama bear on the right-hand side of the frame. And as we push past the mother bear, see what happens in the frame and it kind of tells us a story. So if you see here, we push past this mother bear, we reveal the child in the foreground, we also reveal the environment. We see how happy he is, how safe he is with the mother overlooking. So for me, that's kind of a storytelling technique in just one shot. And if you could do that with a load of different shots, you're laughing because you've told a really good story, but it's quite hard to do. Next up, POV mode or FPV mode. Does anyone know what POV or FP mode is? my man knows. So POV mode is essentially where the camera's axis rolls. Now I like to do lots of these shots when I'm tracking in at the same time. So I'll push into a scene and roll at the same time and it really just gives a new perspective. It's kind of a relatively new filming make making technique even though it has this shot has been around for a long time. But gimbals like these give us the opportunity to re-establish these kinds of shots. Super easy, like Josh, show us how it's done, mate. Like, super easy, and look how smooth and controlled it is. So I'm gonna give you an example of one of my POV shots. So as you can see, we're pushing into the scene and we're also tilting at the same time. For me, it's just really nice because we're like walking reality almost as we turn into the frame. And it also gives a lot of attention to the subject in the middle of the frame. So for me, a POV shot is one of my favorite things to do because they're just so different. A multi-move shot, as I like to call it, this is more than one kind of movement in one shot. So the first one I'm gonna show you, I think, is a push in and a tilt. So I'm gonna push into the scene and tilt down at the same time. Now you do this using the joystick on the gimbals. If you have a little bit of a look here on the gimbals, there's a joystick. Very, very simple stuff. You can tilt upwards and tilt downwards. If I had to put my camera on properly, as I saw that before, mate. Cheers. So, as you can see, you can push into a shot and you can tilt down at the same time. I like to do that because I want to establish more of the scene. If I show you this shot here, I was lucky enough to stay in a sandcastle in Morocco, right? So this sandcastle here was actually a hotel and it was so tall and I didn't have enough room behind me to actually show off that entire frame in one shot. So I had to start off high, push in and tilt down at the same time to show the whole length of this building. So as you can see, we're just tilting down and pushing in at the same time. And it's a really nice storytelling technique and it shows a lot of the frame. If you're tracking someone here, this is a really, really powerful shot. So next up, I wanna show you what all of these shots look like cut together. So I've just shown you a few different techniques, some booming shots, some tracking shots, some dolly tracking shots, but what do they all look like when they're cut together to kind of create a scene? Let me give you an example.
So there you go, that is how you can use lots of different gimbal techniques to kind of build a scene, build a story. And when you emulate all of those together and cut them together nicely, you can tell a really cool, interesting story. So these tools are absolutely incredible for these kind of films. For me, I like to do travel films, so they're perfect for really capturing environments in very, very different ways. So today we've got the new Crane 3 Lab, which is just here, a completely new revolutionary design, which has just been released today. So if you've got time, hang about, have a little play around with it, because I'm sure you'll find it very, very interesting and fun. Also, we've got the Crane Weebill Lab, which is over here. It's a brand new gimbal, which is a very, very small, compact gimbal. Now, we've got image transmission on here, so that you can monitor your footage from your phone. Now, it's absolutely incredible that we can do that nowadays, and it's so, so nice to have a small gimbal, because I like to travel, and this, for me, is just amazing. I love that you can use this now, and it's so small and compact. It can fit in your bag super easy. Awesome. So DJI is one of the market leaders in gimbals, so obviously no video which talks about gimbals is complete without looking at them. They're actually behind me now. Now I looked at this company yesterday and I had a close look at one of their gimbals and I honestly was not impressed. It, it looked cheap uh, and when you moved it uh, a bit more heavily to the left or to the right, the thing would uh, basically go on an angle like that, yeah? So it wouldn't even remain stable, whereas if I could do that here with this one, it's, it's you know, just to show this one doesn't, the one I'm, the, the one I'm filming with anyway. But anyway, so I'm just going to quickly film uh, the, the GGI stand. I'm not going to talk to you, because I talked to them yesterday, and give you an idea of what it looks like. There you can see the device I was talking about. It's being held by people. It has a kind of big strand at the bottom. And it just looks cheap. Let's have a look at another one of those. Of course, they have the larger ones. So they have larger ones as well. And I'll just try and hold it. <laughs> But the stand looks pretty professional, pretty effective. Of course, DJI has, of course, the ultimate gimbal with drones. And look at that monster. So, yeah, I have no doubt they can play good gimbals like this. I was just not impressed. So I'm now in hall four, and behind me is Rolli. Now Rolli have got a gimbal for 99 euros. That's a pretty good value if it's a good gimbal. So we're going to go and find out. Okay. 
das ist äh, eine ganz witzige Geschichte. Äh, das aber auch ganz gut ist, jetzt für diese Key West Geschichte. Genau, wir sind schon mal bei Key West. So, wir Gesichtsecke. Das ist eigentlich ganz gut. Her. Kann ich mal so sagen. Und Pass mal auf, hier oben ist mein Platz. Hier ist die Gesichtsecke noch. Yeah, das ist. Nehmen wir mal ein Gesicht erstmal. Aber es ist nur für das Smoke. Ich habe gesagt, 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 ich So, I've just had a, a look and a listen to the guy at Rolla explaining this uh, thing. Now I videoed it, but he was speaking German, so for my English speaking friends, here is a, a little bit of a summary of what he said. Basically, it's a, a low cost, uh, made in Germany gimbal selling for 99 euros in Germany. If you buy them on the fair, you can have it for 90 euros. And, um, okay, it doesn't have an extension pole, but it has a 4,000 milliamp battery, which will last for about uh, eight hours, something like that. And um, it, it has all the features which you'd actually need, um, and uh, quite a few extra ones. Uh, the software is made in Germany. They, they've already had three updates. They're constantly updating it. They say it's it's selling well, and I must admit, it looks like a quality gimbal for 90 euros. Uh, now the one I'm holding right now costs like 200 or more euros, and okay, I've got an extension pole, but there's not much else which, th which this one has, which the other one, which the Rolly one, doesn't have. And quite honestly, I'm I'm shocked. You know, the Chinese ones are selling normally about 150 dollars. This is cheaper. This is cheaper, and it looks good. And it looks good. So, you know, I may, well, I may even get one, uh, just, just for fun. Um, it's, it's um, impressive. I, I really enjoy, enjoy listening in and uh, watching the explanation. They were showing how it would follow you when you moved around the picture. You can. It has, it has all the features which you would expect. Uh, the software had some incredible features. Like, for example, you can control how fast the joystick button reacts. In other words, you can, you can set it to move really slowly or fast. It's all controllable in the, in the app. Features which are not in the Flow Motion app. Uh, so, I must admit, I was impressed. I was impressed with the quality of the product. I was impressed by the, um, the price. And... Um, and the software, with the, you know, I saw a bit of the software and and it seems to be all pretty much uh, working well. So I think pri for a price, value for money, I, that's my top one so far. So behind me is a company I've been looking forward to, to uh, look at. It, it's a company which has uh, an interesting gimbal where you have an extendable ar um, arm, if you like, so that uh, you can, it just looks like a normal gimbal and you can just pull it out and uh, see it. Now I see this as pretty much competition for the one I'm using and it costs $150 so it's not even that expensive and uh, I want to do a hands-on. So let's have a look at the uh, what is commonly known as the Smooth Mobile, but this is the original equipment manufacturer, and and uh, this is one worth having a look at. As you can see, they have some pretty impressive large devices, so they're obviously well designed, well prepared for professional use. So what do they have for the small guy? We have some smaller versions here. 
Uh, again, pretty impressive. Um, and for such a small camera. And so we want to, we want to specifically see the Bimble 2. And um, I will take their products catalog in a second. And uh, let's see if we can find it on their stand. Here it is, the Vimble 2. This is the Vimble 2, the one I've come to have a look at. And let's play. So I'm not impressed with it. That's good, I'm just using the... Yeah, that's right. So we have this one. But you have, for example, a, a, a zoom button. function, which I don't have. You have an extra this, button for that. This has the zoom. Yeah, okay. This is for uh, locking to one direction. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it certainly looks interesting. Yeah. But this is the old model. The new model is this one. Uh, that is a new model. Yeah. Okay. It has the zoom and I also have the screen here to know the power and uh, ah. everything. Okay. And also the important thing is with this, you can it can record the voice. Well, okay. Ah, okay. So maybe the environment is very noisy. You have this one, the, the smartphone. Yeah. Can get the voice very loudly. Yeah. So you have us. So this is the new model. Is this yes. new now, or it, has this been already been released, or is it just uh, about? Just the release today. The show. Ah, okay, at uh, this show. So, how much is this? The yes, same as. 199. This is a 109. 109. 199. 199. So, this is more expensive. Yeah. But what is, in what way is that better? Uh, the material is different. Yeah. And also with the zoom, and also with the screen, and also with this audio. Audio cable, yeah. Interesting. Now, can that also be extended? No. No? So you don't have the, the extension no, for it? you need extra extension. Yeah. Can you do that? You can extend it. Yeah, we're probably on the screw at the bottom, yeah? Yes, yes. Not in between, as I can do here. Interesting. So, that, so that's a newer model. So how much weight can it carry? A 200 gram phone or 250 or 300 gram? Or? Uh, at the it's the similar size and the weight with the iPhone Yeah. Apple. All iPhones. Yeah. Okay, so that's the SPG2 for your tech. Okay. Interesting, I didn't realize you had a newer model. Yeah. I say that has a pretty good price. You say. What is this price? What, what is this price? This is more like 200. 200. 200. And um, now, one problem I, I know about with this is that when you go down, it then does that. Yeah? Yes. When you go down too low, it goes... It, it so, DJI has grown in... We have the firmware, because for the older firmware, we design it yeah. like this. That's important. Yeah. 
But, but with the, uh, uh, if, if with our new firmware, it's, it's been canceled. it's been it's been fixed, yeah. yeah? <coughs> so whereas I can do that here, and uh, well, I we have the right mode. No, it, it won't do it because sometimes you want to film like this. Yes. yes. Sometimes you want to film down, and yours will then look at the floor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is a disadvantage. Yes. And I can, you know, with the extended with the extension pole, it's easy to film low or high. Correct. Okay. Very interesting. To to see see what you got. Now you've got quite a range. You're quite a big manufacturer of gimbals, I think. Yes. So that was another day at Photokina. Today is Thursday. Oh, it's Thursday. Yep, today is Thursday. Thursday, and um, there are three more days, but I'm going to just come back tomorrow, Friday. It's not going to be my last day at the show. It's just the show is just closed, and I'm just walking around here. I'm in Hall 5 1. Uh, which is probably not so interesting for me, to be honest, but 5.2 is very interesting. Um, today was a day of gimbals. I, I looked around and uh, had a look at a number of gimbals and uh, had a few surprises, I must admit. After having seen pretty poor gimbals uh, on the first day, I saw some pretty good ones today. Uh, ones which looked good which uh, had good pricing. I mean, the Rollite one was kind of really surprising that uh, a German made, well, I probably made in China, but probably just German designed uh, gimbal being sold for 99 euros. If you want to buy it at the show, it costs 90 euros. You can buy it for 90 euros. Now I looked online for commentary about that particular gimbal and they did say, that the motors are a little noisy. Uh, that, that's a little fun that you, don't, you can hear the motors in the thing. Not, not a problem I can report having with the Flow Motion One, which I'm using now. And uh, also, it doesn't have the extendable pole, which I'm using and finding very useful because I can uh, hold the camera at arm's length, or more than arm's length, and. Um, and uh, talk at quite a good distance from the camera in order to do these voiceovers. So, now I've got to find my way out. Ah, oh, right. Obviously, I didn't find the way out. You know, I thought it was the way out. Obviously, it did. And... Oh, no, I know where I am. No, I know where I am now. I'm actually outside Hall 5. And I'm going down here. So, very interesting day. I think well worth coming. Uh, Photokina is a very big photo show, although it's actually smaller than it used to be. All the same, uh, the companies are all compacted to together and there is a hell of a lot of stands and a lot of things you know I mean I've been literally going round using all the time in the day and I haven't finished going through all the halls yet and I've just already done two halls two days uh, several halls so I'm looking forward to Friday Friday is going to be a long day uh, by the way we're just coming to a place which is you get an interesting viewpoint so we go here this this is like a gallery between the halls if I turn this around to show behind me you can actually see quite a long way back this is between halls four and five and uh, they have like a photo exhibition now and that's also worth watching looking at So I have another 
full day. It's going to be a very long day tomorrow, Friday, because unlike the rest of the week, Friday, uh, the show is open until 9 p.m. It doesn't stop at 6 p.m. as the rest of the week. So it's going to be a long day and a very, I'm sure, a very interesting day. So uh, uh, I'll be filming that tomorrow and seeing some more coming. I'm going to plan my day very carefully tonight and so I can get the maximum out of my day tomorrow because definitely I, tomorrow is going to be my last day at the show. So, uh, 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 well, thank you, thank you for watching this. I hope um, uh, I made an interesting video edit of, of the uh, Photokina. It's always worth visiting Photokina, so if you can get to Cologne for the next one, it's well worth coming. And uh, that, that's it. We just, we're actually now going to go down some stairs on our way to an outer area as we are heading towards the south exit of the show and um, but first of all we go outside and we'll have a look around They've done some pretty major changes to the trade fair itself. The, the buildings uh, uh, used to be much closer to the Rhine, and then they sold off those buildings to a television TV channel, RTL. So now we're outside, which is basically where all the smokers come, and there was some food, so let's look around. And you get even these, even these little small uh, stands, like the one behind me. This is strange because filming with the reverse camera on my smartphone, this is being filmed on a smartphone with a, a flow motion one gimbal holding it steady. So of course I see myself and uh, I just see what's behind me, what I've already walked past. So, well thank you for watching and uh, tomorrow I'm moving on to my final day on Friday. Enjoy that. Till then, bye bye. Uh, you see this? So, this is an interesting company. They, they've got uh, the Kickstarter thing, a Wonder 360, which does a, uh, they have two types of cameras. And I just bought one. And I just bought one. The Wonder 360, the little, the white one you can see here. And I just bought one. I'm just waiting for them to add, upgrade the um, firmware. And I'll be doing some 360 degree cameras in the future. So now I'm wondering where I need to be able to put this on here to get a stable video. Now it's You so can also do, by your own, do it by your own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you, but you now update the camera, I have you to update first. It's updating to the latest version, yeah? Yeah, latest version so you can enjoy the best experience. Yeah. Right. So I hope it's a good camera, right? Thank you. You have uh, heard, it, heard it before? Yes. Wow. I've seen it online. I, I've actually looked at the videos. Of one. It's interesting because... YouTube or Facebook? You're on oh. YouTube, I think. I saw it. Because oh. uh, I've been looking at 360 degrees cameras and, and yours was one of them I saw. 
Yeah. No, wait a minute. I'm on Facebook. It kept coming up on the on my Facebook feed as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> on my Facebook feed, I kept on seeing adverts for this. Wow. wow. And so Maybe. I looked at the I looked at the campaign. Yeah. And thought, well, it's not ready yet. What my, my my um my problem with um, Kickstarter or Indigo Go is the same. Oh. Is you back something and then there it takes about a year before you get the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? yeah, and then the, and by then the prices of very, all the competitors have gone down, yeah. and yeah. you end up paying too much. What's happened with this? This came a year after I'd ordered it. Yeah. So, also, this is a, like a product at your company or, what? or China company. It's, it's made in China, yeah, but the, oh. but the company is in is in Oslo, oh, Oslo. not in Norway. So. Is it heavy? Okay. Wow, wow, no, no. Really good. But, it, but it's, it's great because you can change the angle, yeah? And it's really uh, good. It's, it's good, I like it. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so I hope this is good. <laughs> It'll be better than the, my yeah, little toy which I was playing. Just let me know if you have uh, any questions. So, do you have my uh, brochure? Yeah. Probably not. I'll take, put the brochure in the, in the bag and then I'll... I got it. Yeah, now it's, it's finished updating. Uh, but I'm sorry, uh, this IP card uh, is not included uh, in the price. What's so, included? Uh, it's not included in the price. Sorry. What's included? Uh, this SD card. I need to. Oh, the uh, card. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't. I didn't accept that. Wait, that. I did not expect you to include it. You, I, you need. How big a card will it take? One hundred and twenty-eight. One twenty-eight. Okay, yeah. I'll it's put a one twenty-eight in there because you probably need a lot of space for yeah. for the videos. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're not going to leave that one in there? Oh, yeah, it's only sixteen. It's too small. So, um, um, you can contact me for any question. This is my WhatsApp. Okay. Okay. Yeah, All right. You do you do know what, what do you know what this word means in German? Wonder, wonder, wonder. It means it means wonder. Wonder. But it's wonder. a German word, yeah. Uh, it's a wonder. Okay. Yeah, because my boss, my big boss, oh, yeah. Yeah. our communist big boss, is a uh, he was uh, a student in German. Ah. Uh, so he gave it a wonder name, wonder twist. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So you are German? I, I live in Cologne, in this uh, town. Cologne. Oh, you live in Cologne. It's yeah. easy to me to come to Fertikina. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, really okay. really appreciate Well, I will see it. I, I will see how good this is. And, and I give you... Hey, you have a sore toe, you have a sore toe. No, I must admit, I prefer the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I know you like beer. Beer? Photo opener. Oh, right, okay. Uh, and you can stick uh, on the refrigerator. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Anything for the refrigerator is good, yes. Do you like this? Yeah, this why not? Dog. Looks good. Looks good. <laughs> Put it in there. Thank you so much. Okay. So, uh, now, now, it's fun. so now, got, now I can have some fun. Yes. It's, it's probably not charged, it probably needs charging. Uh, I guess, yes, 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 maybe, you, you need to charge a little bit. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Well, I, so you can use a power bank. I have a power bank with yeah. me, yeah. yeah. But I, I, need an, I need an SD card anyway, so. <laughs> but, so, yes. Yeah, so, so, unless, I'll, I'll just see if I can find... Do you have a SD card in your pocket? What, an SD card? No. I have... No, no, no. Uh, then I say, give it to you, it's free. Oh, okay, thank you. A new one, okay. Uh, small. <laughs> Sorry. All right. uh, we only have this one. That's okay. What size is that? Sixteen. Mm, Sixteen. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. It's enough for the first picture. Thank you so much. Please. Yeah, I will be putting videos online. <laughs> yeah. On my YouTube channel yeah. and saying how good good the. Uh, so you are an uh, influencer. What? So are you an influencer? Yes. Oh, you are influencer. Yes, oh, I do. Oh, oh. Great. 
Yeah, I, I put some videos online, I test products. Uh, so you know a lot about the electronic products. Wow. That's, why, that's why I sell gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so you also uh, uh, you also sell this? I sell things, yeah. Oh, wow. So I so I make online videos about products and then I link and then I link them to my shop. Oh wow, I, I, I understand. You yeah. can do this about <laughs> this one. So maybe yeah. I can sell that one, yeah, yeah, but it's not available yet. Yeah. <laughs> available in the market already. It's already on the market. Yes, we have stock and we already sell it uh, Amazon. Yeah, on UK Amazon. Amazon and USA Amazon. Oh, okay, okay. Wow. And AliExpress, yeah. Yes. That's yeah, good. But that, but that one's not available yet. I'm sorry, it's only for distributor and backers. Yeah. So I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. That's probably you say there's not much difference anyway. Yeah, I assure you, but only the case. Only the case and the battery. Only the case and the battery is the same. Yeah. It's just the different. Everything else is the same. Yes. Okay. Including a smart tracking and uh, smart tracking and, and this 3D room. And the, uh, this will be later. Then. Okay. Later. But it will because come. Because this is the important thing right. for the F3D. So okay. Okay. Yeah. But that will come here as well. Will come but later. Maybe. Okay. Well, a day later, two weeks later. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You too, yes. Enjoy the rest of the show. It's my last day on the show. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Ah, good, thank you. So, so that was interesting. Just bought a, a Wanda 3D uh, 360 degree camera and uh, watch out for videos on this channel in the future which are going to be in 360 degrees. I wonder if I can do one at the show. Bye bye.
sehen. Phil Bereve, vielen Dank, dass wir hier sind. Wir sind für euch. Genießt die Show. Dankeschön.